I couldn't be more excited than to bring in who I would argue is the most knowledgeable travel industry person out there. And I would put him up against anyone that writes for Condé Nast Traveler or any of the other major news outlets. Uh, he is a member of, uh, and actually a staff member of a consortia that we, we are a part of and a proud member of the Signature Travel Network, which you may have heard of the Signature Travel Network through our office. Uh, it is a consortia of the leading travel agencies all over North America uh, that we aggregate our marketing, uh, sales, uh, technology in a meaningful way to bring value to you, to bring experts to you and we can deliver it because the power behind us is such a, a bigger entity than just us here in Southern Arizona. This gentleman is the executive vice president with Signature. He's one of the most well-traveled individuals I know and he has just recently come back from this region and knows it so well that his presentation, A Savvy Traveler's Guide to New Zealand is going to be a treat. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Ignacio Maza. Okay, thank you. Right, and, and and thank you so much for the for the warm welcome. With that introduction, I think I can retire now, Ryan. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, and welcome everyone to this uh, program. I uh, love New Zealand. I visited twice, as Ryan mentioned, uh, I, again fairly recently, and wanted to share with you my experiences, uh, the, some of the places that I visited, where to stay, and and what have you. So, without further ado, let's um, let's get going. So. The, um, let's see, Hang, let me make sure that this is working, give me a second. Okay, so to organize the uh, outline today, I'm gonna tell you a few reasons why you should visit New Zealand or consider some of the highlights. I'm gonna give you some suggested itineraries, uh, some places to stay that I think are very memorable, uh, and then some experiences and, and finally some advice to help you get to the to the next level with your with your trip planning, so to get uh, started here, uh, I'm going to put this word up uh, Aotearoa, and what it means is uh, the land of the long white cloud, and uh, the Maoris, who were the original uh, inhabitants of uh, New Zealand, were actually Polynesians who uh, came in on canoes and arrived in New Zealand, and they were absolutely dazzled by the scenery and what they saw. And this is uh, the name that they gave uh, New Zealand originally. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention about New Zealand is, of course, all the, the many reasons uh, to visit, the natural beauty, the landscapes, all the opportunities to uh, enjoy sports of every kind, everything from fishing to hiking to uh, all kinds of crazy things that New Zealanders like to do, and then some of the special experiences that are available when uh, you visit the country. So I want to get started with just a, a few words about New Zealand just to get you situated. So New Zealand has two main islands, the, the north and the south. If you put it all together, it would be roughly the size of uh, Colorado. And if you stretched it out end to end, it would be about a thousand miles from north to south. In general, New Zealand uh, has about a third of the population living in Auckland, a third of the population living in the North Island, and the other third in the South Island. But in the whole country, you only have 5 million people. So chances are, once you get out of any city, you're going to be in the country and you're not going to be running into too many people, which is, I think, one of the beautiful aspects of um, New Zealand. As I mentioned earlier, uh, New Zealand was settled by uh, the Maoris who were Polynesians. And I have always found it very interesting that even though New Zealand is fairly close to Australia, and Australia had uh, Aborigines living there for 50, 60,000 years, these people did, never thought of continuing east with their journey and stayed very happy in Australia. But it was the Polynesians who traveled from what is now Tahiti and the Marquesas all the way on these uh, canoes, all the way to New Zealand. New Zealand was also one of the last places in the world to be settled only about 800 years ago. So the history of uh, New Zealand is very recent, um, was discovered in the 17th century by the Dutch Abel Tasman. Then 100 years later, Captain Cook arrived and claimed it for the British crown. And then New Zealand became uh, independent in the uh, 20th century. So if you were to draw a triangle, uh, of Polynesia, you would have New Zealand at the bottom, you would have Hawaii at the top, and then all the way east, you would have Easter Island, uh, which belongs to Chile, just to kind of paint a picture for you as to where um, you are. So 
we're going to start with the highlights. Obviously, you've probably heard of all of these places in the South Island. Absolutely, the marquee destination is Milford Sound, as well as Queenstown, but I'm going to also talk about a couple of other places that I think are very much worth seeing. And then in the North Island, uh, Rotorua, and then of course, Auckland, the uh, biggest city, and Wellington, uh, the capital. These are sort of the absolute, absolute highlights if you have never been. Um, in terms of where your journey begins, probably you will arrive in Auckland. This is the biggest airport. This is the main gateway for New Zealand, a city of about one and a half million people uh, on the harbor. Everybody that can in New Zealand, in Auckland, absolutely buys a boat because you want to be out and about uh, everywhere you can. And Auckland is very interesting because there is a great deal to see and do. A lot of people rush through Auckland, and I think that's a big mistake because you could easily spend two days here and not run out of things to do. Uh, on the upper left, that tall, tall tower um, is the tallest tower in the Southern Hemisphere with these panoramic views of the city. On the upper right, that museum that you see is the, both the War Memorial and the uh, Museum of, of New Zealand. Uh, uh, so if you have uh, one museum to see in Auckland, that's the one that I would suggest to kind of get a feel for the uh, Maori culture. Uh, on the lower right is uh, Ponsonby, which is probably your, your hip and trendy uh, neighborhood uh, of Auckland. And then on the left is the view from a place called Mount Eden, because uh, Auckland, believe it or not, has a series of dormant volcanoes. So you're going to have all these hills with beautiful views of the city and, and, and parks and what have you. Auckland is absolutely manageable and very quickly, within 30 minutes, 40 minutes drive, you will be out. Uh, in, on, on the beach, you will be out in the countryside. So it, it is a very, very livable um, uh, city. In terms of the region, there is a lot to see and do, as I mentioned. So if you were going to spend a couple of days in Auckland, here are some uh, suggestions. On the upper left would be going to the Western beaches. Some of them, as you can see, have black sand because New Zealand is uh, volcanic. On the uh, right-hand side, you're gonna see two images uh, and they're both in a place called Waiheke Island, which is in the harbor, and then on the left, you could go on a sailboat in the Haraki Gulf. And the team at Bon Voyage can arrange all of these experiences for you with sightseeing, with guides, or without, or however you want to experience the region. But it is really beautiful, and all of these places are within less than an hour's drive of Auckland. So very manageable, and then you still come back to the city, and you have your restaurants, and you have your nightlife, and shopping, and uh, all, all the rest. So. Uh, in Auckland, I'm going to recommend a couple of hotels uh, to stay. Uh, this is the Sofitel Auckland, which is in a place called Viaduct Harbor. Very convenient to downtown Auckland, a very modern hotel with floor to ceiling windows. It's going to be a more affordable option than the hotel I'm going to uh, place uh, in front of you in a moment, but a beautiful location right in the middle of uh, central uh, Auckland and, and a great, great place to stay. And then the more modern, more luxurious hotel that opened recently is the Park Hyatt in Auckland, which is probably the premier uh, hotel in uh, Auckland uh, right now. And it is on a pier, so you have water on three sides. And this is going to be one of the official hotels for the America's uh, World Cup, which is going to um, uh, go moving to uh, Auckland. So very contemporary hotel, very design driven hotel. And this would be a little bit more expensive than the Sofitel. The nice thing about these two properties, uh, while I'm on this subject, is that uh, booking with Bon Voyage will enable you to receive valuable privileges like breakfast every day, a uh, hundred dollar resort credit, and other benefits that will help make your stay even more special than, than it already will be, because these are both great, great places to stay. So from here, I'm going to fly you down to Queenstown, which is probably the most famous uh, location in the uh, South Island. And Queenstown is beautiful. It's located on the shores of a lake called uh, Lake Wakatipu, which is shaped like a lightning bolt. And this is really the hub for a lot of things, for extreme sports, for active adventure. There's a lot of interesting things to do in the region. And this is also the gateway for Milford Sound which I'm gonna talk about in a moment, probably the most famous landmark in, in all of New Zealand. And you know the number one thing that people want to see when they visit New Zealand, but it's a very manageable city, very beautiful. It's right uh, on, the, on the shores of, of a lake. And it is you know, busy year round because uh, in the winter, which is our summer, they have skiing and Queenstown is also a, a hub 
uh, for skiing. This is Milford Sound, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, it, it, it is just these dramatic mountains on both sides. The only challenge with Milford Sound is that unfortunately, the weather isn't so terrific because of where it is. So you do get many days with rain and clouds. I mean, a day like this is, is considered absolutely magnificent. So choosing how you see Milford Sound, there are pluses and minuses, and I'm gonna uh, share these with you in just a moment, but no question that this is a wonderful landmark. And there are a number of ways that you could do Milford Sound. You could do it as a day trip from Queenstown, and I'm gonna show you how in a moment, or you could stay in Milford Sound in a lodge and take two or three days to explore this area, whatever fits in with your um, itinerary. So as I mentioned, you've got um, Queenstown, which is on the right uh, of, of the map, and then you have this road that winds all the way around to get you up into uh, Milford Sound. So as the crow flies, it's actually not a long distance, but going all the way around is going to be three to four hours each way. So three or four hours to Milford and then another three or four hours back if you're doing it on a motor coach. So if you do it that way, obviously it's the safest bet because you're going to get to Milford Sound no matter what happens. The downside is, is that you're traveling with a group of people and it is almost eight hours uh, uh, sitting on a bus. The other way that many people do it is on a helicopter from uh, Queenstown to Milford Sound. It's a dramatic, beautiful, beautiful helicopter ride that will take you there very quickly. The only challenge is, is that, of course, the helicopter is weather dependent. So most times the helicopter can get through, but there will be time when the weather isn't uh, clear and unfortunately you can't do the helicopter. So my advice to you, if you are doing the helicopter, is to book the helicopter the day you arrive in Queenstown. Why? Because in the event of inclement weather, you could always move it back a day as opposed to leaving the helicopter to the last day in case that there's bad weather, then you didn't get to see Milford Sound. And then the third option of seeing Milford Sound would be to spend a couple of nights in Teanau, which is towards the bottom of the slide, towards the middle. And there's a beautiful uh, a lodge there called Fjordland. And you could stay there a couple nights and then do Milford, which is gonna be a lot closer, and then back to Teanau and then back to Queenstown. But again, it all depends on how much time you have uh, to uh, see Milford Sound. But those would be your, your three options, basically to, you know, to see it. And once you are in Milford Sound, you can take this beautiful boat ride, which goes right up to the waterfalls. You can go hiking, you can go kayaking, again, all depending on how much time you have. But it is an absolutely magical uh, uh, part of New Zealand. Very, very beautiful, very emblematic. You've seen, I'm sure, a photograph of this at some point uh, because it is sort of the Eiffel Tower of, of New Zealand, if you would. Um, the other thing in Queenstown, there is a lot to, to see and do. Uh, you can go for a drive, you can go to this little town on the upper uh, right, which is a place called Arrowtown, which is an old uh, gold mining town, which is really charming. Uh, and then at the bottom, you see these beautiful mountains and you can go hiking in a, in a, a, a trail called Rootburn, which is probably one of the 10 most beautiful hikes in uh, New Zealand. And if the scenery looks a little familiar to you, I'm going to tell you why. And it is because you have seen some of these mountains if you saw the movies of the Lord of the Rings because it was shot in New Zealand and many of the scenes take place along the Rude Burn Trail. So I just leave that with you so that you remember when you go, you'll think of me. So in terms of uh, other things that you could do if you're very adventuresome, of course, bungee jumping. This was invented here and this is not for everybody. I didn't do it, true confessions, uh, but they have a perfect safety record and you do absolutely jump out. It is exhilarating from all accounts. I just sat in a bench opposite uh, on a hill overlooking the, the bridge and I just watched people jumping and that was enough of a thrill for me. But a lot of people love to do this. And there are also other things that you could do as well, like going on one of these jet boats or, or uh, again, go. Whatever you can think of, pretty much you probably will. Um, let me see if I can get this slide to turn. Sorry. Okay. Oops. I jumped the slide. Uh, okay. 
a couple of places to stay in uh, in Queenstown. One of them is the Sofitel. If you want to be right in the middle of town, then this is where I would recommend. It's a very well-run hotel, very central. You walk out the door and all the restaurants and, and the shops and everything is, is, is right there in front of you. And then the other option is Azur, which is on a hill overlooking Queenstown, but you're not right in the middle of the city. The beauty of this place is the setting because you're on a hill and you have these fantastic views of the lake and the mountains and you have complete privacy. And uh, you have these bungalows, they're on the side of a hill. Uh, I stayed here and I absolutely loved it. My only regret was that I didn't stay longer because it's very, very special and absolutely uh, well worth doing. It's only 10 minutes uh, to downtown and the hotel uh, runs a shuttle that can take you back and forth when you need to go into town. Um, my third recommendation, if you have the time, is to stay at one of the lodges, and this is Blanket Bay, probably one of the most famous uh, so, so-called uh, super lodges of um, New Zealand. And there are a few. This is one of the most famous, it's right on the lake. And these are places that are destinations unto themselves. You never wanna leave one of these lodges because they're very small, the service is outstanding, the dining is terrific, they have a phenomenal uh, uh, wine cellar, and you have all these activities that you can do right on property. The problem with these lodges is that you never want to go home, is the only problem. So I, I ask you that if you uh, go to New Zealand, promise me that you're gonna stay uh, in a couple of the super lodges for two or three nights because you, you want to have the experience. This is the quintessential uh, New Zealand um, hospitality, and this is what one of the rooms uh, looks like, and this is a view. Um, I took this picture from my room looking out towards the mountain, and then this is the lodge uh, in the evening. Just absolutely beautiful setting in this enormous uh, estate. Um, just a, a very, very special uh, experience, no, no question about it. From here, I'm going to fly you up uh, to an area called Marlborough, uh, New Zealand, and this is the center of your wine country. So New Zealand, as you know, is, is one of the great wine exporters of the world. And you probably have heard of a um, Sauvignon Blanc called Cloudy Bay, which is very famous in the US. And this is where it is grown and, 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 and bottled. And you get to visit not only Cloudy Bay, but hundreds of other uh, vineyards. They have wonderful restaurants. So this is a, a, a beautiful uh, area of, of New Zealand and lots to see and do. And one of my favorite places to stay in this area is called Marlborough Sounds, which is a series of inlets and bays and islands all around the northern end of the uh, South Island. And one of the most beautiful places to go is Motuara Island, which is this bird sanctuary. And yes, you do see uh, these uh, blue penguins and you see uh, all kinds of uh, uh, birds that I had never seen before. And it's a great place for hiking and, and, and kayaking. And in this area, one of the best places to stay is the Bay of Many Coves, which is this resort. You think you're on an island, but actually you're on a peninsula and you arrive here by boat or helicopter. And again, you stay in these bungalows overlooking the bay. One of my favorite things to do here uh, was to get up at, uh, at sunrise and go out kayaking and then just you know, feel the, the, the stillness of, of this area of New Zealand that is so, so very beautiful. And again, great service, great dining and uh, all the rest. The other area that I want you to think about when you're in this part of, of New Zealand is Kaikoura, which a lot of people miss. And this is really, um, uh, you know, Grand Central Terminal for whales, for dolphins, for uh, seals, for all kinds of, of marine life. And it's a very small town, very famous for its uh, uh, seafood. And the, the, the special uh, experience here is to be very, very close to uh, the marine wildlife. So this is one of the few places in the world where you can swim with these dusky dolphins, these pods of 50, 100, 150 dolphins that will literally be jumping around you. You are in the middle of the open ocean, you are with a wetsuit and it is exhilarating. Um, I, you know, I did it, the water was freezing, but you know, what can I say? You know, it's one of those things that you have to do. You can also go snorkeling with the seals. And of course there's great uh, uh, whale watching. And the best place to stay in this, in this uh, uh, part is in one of the deer uh, farms or uh, one of the sheep stations that, that you will see um, uh, all over New Zealand. And a wonderful place to stay in Kaikoura is Hapuku, which is this lodge with these funny looking uh, tree houses that are actually 30 feet um, uh, up from the ground. 
uh, very, very special place, very small. Uh, it's run by a wonderful gentleman called Chris Sturgeon and, and his team. And you really feel like you're staying at somebody's house. It's that intimate and, and, and that special. And on the right is a, a photograph of one of the tree houses, just to give you a feel of, of what the rooms uh, uh, look and, and, and feel like. So from here, we're gonna go up to the North Island to a place called Rotorua, which uh, many of you have been to Yellowstone. And this is, I guess, New Zealand's answer to Yellowstone. So yes, you have geysers, uh, you have these amazing uh, prismatic uh, uh, thermal pools, you have all this geologic uh, uh, activity. And this was actually sacred uh, to the Maoris because they didn't know what to make of all of these, uh, all of this natural uh, phenomenon. But this is right in the middle of the, uh, of the North Island. And this was also a hub for the Maori culture. So when you're in this part of the world, take time to visit uh, the churches. The, these are, this is one of the meeting houses of the, of the Maori. Uh, very beautiful, very emblematic and, and typical of, of their um, style. Um, and there is lots to see and do in the area. Ruru is very famous for the fishing, for the hiking. There's a beautiful redwood forest that you can uh, explore very, very pleasant uh, uh, region of uh, New Zealand. And the other place uh, to visit, which was on the news uh, a few months ago, if you recall, was this white island, which was a, a volcano uh, in the middle of the, of the sea that you can actually visit uh, by, by helicopter. Uh, I had a chance to visit when I was there and I thought it was amazing, but obviously it, it is a volcano and you have to be very keen on what are the latest bulletins and latest reports, but definitely a landmark in, uh, in New Zealand, no question about it. And in this area, one of the best places to stay, another super lodge uh, to propose to you is Treetops, which is in the middle of this uh, 2000 acre uh, estate. Uh, you stay either in this main building where they have a number of sleeping rooms or in one of these freestanding villas uh, that are spread out over the property. And again, it's like staying at somebody's home. If you had a rich uncle in, in New Zealand that had a country home, this is probably what it would um, look like. Uh, again, a very, very special place um, to stay. And again, you're fairly close. I don't have to tell you that fishing here is outstanding as it's this beautiful waterfall that is on property, believe it or not. And you can actually have lunch right in front of the waterfall if you, if you so desire. The, the team on property can arrange just about anything. And if you wanted something smaller and more manageable, then I would say Solitaire uh, Lodge in, in Rotorua is this tiny little lodge that you see at the tip of the peninsula. You're surrounded by water on three sides. You can go kayaking from the dock and you have a beautiful view of a mountain called uh, Tarawera, which I'm gonna show you uh, a little bit later in, in the program. But both are, are convenient to, to Rotorua. South is a place called Lake Taupo, which is not far, I would say 40 minutes or 45 minute drive. And this is a great area for rafting and for fishing. It's very, very famous all over the world. If you know any serious fishermen and you mention uh, the area of Taupo, they are gonna know. And one of the most beautiful hikes in New Zealand is this Tongariro Alpine Crossing. It is a demanding hike, but it is beautiful. And you get to see uh, volcanoes and lakes and what have you, the terrain. Uh, uh, changes, as you can see here, looks like a desert, but there are parts that are that are very green and very lush. So just a very, very special uh, area of um, New Zealand. And in this part of the world, the best place to stay is probably the most famous lodge in all of New Zealand called Huka Lodge. And believe it or not, this is uh, Queen Elizabeth, uh, her favorite, favorite place to stay in New Zealand. She's been here three or four times. In fact, there's a, a photograph of her and, and a note that she wrote to the staff. It is a very, very special uh, lodge, uh, and you're right on the river, right before the, where the waterfall uh, uh, goes over, and you're either in the main building or you have all of these different uh, cottages that are spread out uh, in front of, of the river. And then if you wanted uh, something that perhaps was a little bit more contemporary than Kinloch Manor, this is for your serious, serious golfers because the golf course is, is right there. It's one of the best uh, golf courses in New Zealand. And you sleep in these bungalows that you see on the left, but very modern, totally different from uh, Hookah Lodge. Again, it all depends on, on your style and um, your preference. So from here, I'm gonna fly north and take you to the Bay of Islands. And this is um, where people in Auckland like to go to the beach. 
Uh, this is where many of them have a summer home. It's a series of these beautiful coves and, and rolling uh, green hills. It's a very pleasant part of New Zealand. It's gonna have your warmest weather because you are furthest uh, north. Uh, much further north than you would be in, in, in Queenstown. And this is very famous because this is um, called the Waitangi Treaty Grounds. And this is where the New Zealanders and the British signed a, a, a treaty that basically made a New Zealand a British colony. But every day you have these performances of, of the Maori uh, dancers and you get to see the meeting houses and the canoes and you really get a sense of, of Maori life. There's also a beautiful uh, museum, very much uh, worth, worth seeing. And in this part of the world, uh, the super lodge here that I'm going to recommend to you is the lodge at Kari Cliffs. Uh, for your golfers, this is Mecca. It is considered one of the top 50 courses in the world easily. And it is on a, on a hill overlooking these beautiful cliffs uh, that go down to the ocean. Again, you never want to leave uh, Kari Cliffs because it is so special. And you sleep in a series of cottages uh, that are spread out over the um, the, the property, but it is an estate with hundreds and hundreds of acres uh, with exceptional service and dining and, uh, and everything else. And this is just to give you a feel of, of the, this is the spa on the left and um, the uh, golf course on, on the right. So maybe some of you have already been to New Zealand or maybe you have heard of all of these places and you're probably wondering, well, where else could we go? So here are a few other ideas for you uh, to, to think about. Um, one of them is this place I mentioned earlier is Teanau because it also is the gateway for doubtful sound. And if Milford Sound can get you know, crowded at times with a, a lot of visitors, doubtful sound is much longer than Milford and it is not crowded at all. And in fact, they have boats that can take you out and there are boats that you can uh, spend the night in and maybe spend a couple of nights in this, in this part of the world. And Bon Voyage can arrange all of that for you if you wanted to do uh, uh, something different. And the other idea for people that enjoy uh, great uh, train rides is a Transalpine, which runs east-west uh, from Christchurch, or the Pacific Coastal, which runs from Christchurch uh, and goes north uh, towards Marlborough, which I showed you earlier today. These are not trains where you sleep in, these are day trips. But again, if you want beautiful scenery, then these might be two, two train rides to, um, to think about. And another uh, area of New Zealand that is very beautiful is the Abel Tasman National Park, which is on the South Island. Wonderful hikes, and some of the hikes go right along uh, the beach, as you can see here. So this would be another uh, option for you to consider if you have already been or you want to explore further. And then there's this little island uh, called Stewart Island. And the reason that people come here is to get this very isolated feeling because the island is very rural. There's only a little inn uh, for you to stay. There's no uh, luxury hotels, but it is a place where you can probably see Kiwis in the wild um, and chances are you will see them in, in Stewart Island. As you know, the Kiwis are, are very elusive, the birds, not the people. <laughs> and then in uh, Wellington, if you had time, this is a capital of New Zealand. A lot of people compare it to San Francisco because they have these, you know, funny looking cable cars that go up and down, um, but it is, it is a very, very pleasant uh, a city to, to, to visit. They also have great museums in, on Polynesian art, if you were interested in that sort of thing. And Bon Voyage can arrange all of these experiences for you. Uh, everything from helicopter adventures, to meeting curators, to having your own sailboat uh, in Abel Tasman National Park, uh, maybe spending a couple of nights in Doubtful Sound. Whatever you can dream of in New Zealand, chances are that a Bon Voyage specialist can arrange this for you. They just want to understand what are your, your, your passion points? What are you interested in? How much time you have? And let them create something that is custom tailored uh, for you. But this is just a very uh, small tip of the iceberg of what is possible in um, uh, New Zealand. And then the other thing that I wanted to mention is just uh, some practical advice. Obviously high season is November to March, but consider traveling in the shoulders, which would be our fall and spring. It is not gonna be as crowded. The hotels will be less expensive. Um, but I have to tell you, because of where you are, you really do need to dress for all seasons in one day because New Zealand is kind of unpredictable. It could be sunny and then it could be windy and then it could be a little cooler. So just bring things that you can zip up and, and you'll be fine. Um, somebody asked a question a few slides ago whether you need a visa for um, New Zealand and you do need something called an ETA, which is an electronic uh, travel authorization. It is 
for all intents and purposes an electronic visa. But it is very easy to get, it is very simple, but you do need it uh, before uh, you, you board. Um, and there are a number of new flights. Uh, there's a flight now from Los Angeles to Christchurch nonstop, but there is very good service, uh, especially on Air New Zealand from Los Angeles to Auckland nonstop. It is about an 11, 12 hour flight, depending on, on, on the wind. And I encourage you to go to this website, at Tiaki New Zealand, and it is just about traveling responsibly and making sure that you are being a great ambassador for the US as you uh, arrive in um, uh, New Zealand. Um, let me see if I have anything else on the presentation. I just uh, hope that you have enjoyed this, this short seminar, and I want to encourage you to keep exploring and to keep discovering. And remember that volcano that I showed you from Rotorua? This is the summit. Uh, and I had an opportunity to, to uh, hike around here. It was wonderful and um, just uh, wanted to leave you with, uh, with this image. And then just to say thank you for being with me today. I hope that you have found this interesting and I hope that you will um, be contacting uh, Bon Voyage soon because I wanna go to New Zealand and I wanna go with you. Thank you. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Ignacio. That was uh, as informative as you will ever find. And I hope that those of our participants feel the same way. And I've seen you present many, many times. And what I do know is if I have a question about the presentation, more often than not, you will get it answered. And you did it again to me. Uh, I started thinking, well, what's the best time of year to travel? And you answered that in, in one of those slides. You even talked about the best value the best time to travel with the lesser crowds. Uh, I One of the things though that, that really stuck out to me that a couple of our, our fans, or our fans, our audience uh, may have been questioning and we sell a lot of cruises and cruises is very a very popular way to travel the world, but it almost seems like I'm missing out on the essence of New Zealand if I just take a cruise. Would you agree with that assessment? Well, yes and no, because there's, there's different ways to do it. You could do a cruise that uh, either began or uh, uh, ended in New Zealand. So you could add a New Zealand holiday and then go on your cruise. But there are also a number of cruise lines uh, like the new Crystal Endeavor, uh, Silver Sea, uh, Ponant, a number of these companies that do these circumnavigations of New Zealand and where you get to see a lot of very interesting parts of New Zealand. So I think you can absolutely combine with a cruise and whatever you don't see on your voyage that you want to see, you can arrange and see it before or after, then get on your ship and off you go. A couple other questions for you. Thanks for, for that. Uh, and we're getting some great responses here uh, in regards to, to questions directly from the audience. Where's the image that is on this presentation right now? Where is that located? Um, this, is, this is actually in, in, in France. It's in uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Brittany. Uh, and it was actually one of the uh, cliffs that were painted by, by Monet. It is beautiful. This Let audience me... is sharp, sharp, sharp. We will. Uh, we may just have to have you back on to, to talk about a savvy traveler's guide to to the, to the south of France, if uh, if if our audience so likes. Um, I know that the hemispheres uh, are different. Uh, what's the weather like in November uh, uh, in New Zealand? In no November is beautiful. November will be the end of of the New Zealand spring, and it is right before. Um, high season starts, which usually begins in, in September. So I would say November would be a great time to go. I mean, the truth of the matter is, is that you can go to New Zealand all year long. In our summer, which is their winter, if you were in Queenstown, would it be cold early in the morning? Yes, it would. It would be freezing in the morning, as a matter of fact. But when the sun comes out, it warms up. It could easily be 40 degrees, 50 degrees during the day, and then it would cool back down again. You would have snow in the mountains, and if you're okay with that, then you you could go to to uh, uh, Queenstown uh, during their during their winter. Um, I just recommend the spring and fall because the weather is a little bit more temperate, and you don't have as many visitors, and the value is is better. Because in in high season, especially over the holidays, if you want Christmas, New Year's, uh, oh my goodness, it, it, everything goes up, up, up. And in fact, it, at some of these lodges, you have to book a year in advance if you want to secure holiday space. And it seems like based on uh, so many of the different activities that you mentioned you could do, the spring or fall for them would be the best time to go because 
someone who loves the outdoors, this is paradise for them. Yes, agreed. We're talking about hiking, fishing, uh, zip lining, all of those different activities. So spring and fall would yeah. make sense. Yeah, but those. I don't. But I don't want uh, anyone to be intimidated, regardless of your level of fitness. There will be a place for you in New Zealand because even if you just want to go, say that you're in Queensland and you just go for a walk, for a simple walk, it's going to blow you away. It's so beautiful. I mean, you don't have to be a, a marathon runner. You don't have to be in peak health condition for you to go on a, on a five-hour hike on the root burn trail. You could, but you don't have to. It, it's all very accessible. And the wonderful thing about um, uh, working with, with Bon Voyage is that they can custom tailor all the activities to suit your pace. We want uh, all the afternoons off, no problem. We, we don't want to get up early. Okay, we want to do this. What, whatever you want to do, they can arrange it for you so you can enjoy New Zealand um, uh, the most. My other word of advice is the day that you arrive in New Zealand, um, I wouldn't schedule too many things because of, of the jet lag. But believe it or not, I, I found that I didn't have, the jet lag wasn't too bad because you leave Los Angeles at night and arrive in Auckland early in the morning. And on the way back, you leave at night and arrive in Los Angeles early in the morning. So I did not need a lot of time to adjust. I had a much harder time in Australia because the flights from Sydney leave in the morning and you arrive in the day and you don't know whether it's day or night and you're all mixed up. So. I, I would not plan anything too strenuous or demanding that day that you arrive to give yourself a time to take a nap and take a shower and settle in and then start your tour. Many of the questions that we field every day at Bon Voyage, our answer is it depends. Uh, and one of the reasons is like you mentioned, Ignacio, trying to custom uh, create and curate a vacation that meets the needs of the individual traveler. Well, it depends on what you love, what you like, what you don't like. Uh, this one's probably another one of those open-ended questions. How much time should I plan for a vacation to New Zealand to really do it justice? Okay, I would say, two weeks if you could at least because there is just so much to do and i mean i spent 17 17 18 days and i can't tell you the list of places that i missed that i wish that i had visited so uh, if you could de devote three weeks i promise you that you're not going to run out of things to do my advice though is if you're going all the way to new zealand don't go for a week because that's just too short i mean you could but you're gonna miss so much and you're gonna be in such a rush all the time that I want you to spend a little bit more time and enjoy it. And when you're in the lodges, do me a favor, spend one day where you book nothing at all, just to be in the place and, and soak in the atmosphere like Blanket Bay or Kauri Cliffs. They are all just magnificent places and the setting is so beautiful that you just sit there with your mouth open and you just say, I can't believe I'm here type of thing. So you don't wanna miss that either. Excellent. And I know there was a, a, one of our uh, viewers here did ask about tourism being a, open in New Zealand yet. And I think I can answer that. Like most of the world, there is some slow rollouts and we're seeing some really positive things happening uh, in Europe, specifically Greece and some other areas. I know Ignacio is queued in on this. Uh, New Zealand right now is not allowing international visitors, but New Zealand's not a place that you would want to book with a week's notice. Uh, this is definitely something you would want to plan to get it right. As you can see, lots of different moving parts to get around. I, what I did love, whenever I hear Ignacio, you say you can arrive by helicopter to this hotel property, I get excited because that is a special place if you use that phrase. So with that in mind, it is a destination that you do want to prepare for and have plenty of time to plan for. So I understand the question, Linda, of what you're looking uh, to accomplish, but we are seeing really positive traction uh, across the globe uh, with openings of tourism for, uh, for the, the situation that we're in. We all want it done safely and, and with everybody's health in mind, but we're dreaming big today in New Zealand's a destination you would definitely want to plan for months yeah. in advance. Yeah, I mean, from what I have heard, uh, New Zealand is going to open uh, the country to Australians and Australia is going to open for arrivals from New Zealand and they're going to create like this bubble, if you would, where people can go back and forth. Everything that I have read says that New Zealand will be opening to uh, American travelers in the fall, possibly, I want to say September, October, but your, what your comment is absolutely right. I mean, this is a very fluid situation and 
I wouldn't book anything for September 1st because that might be cutting it too close and you do want to plan ahead. But again, uh, Bon Voyage has excellent, excellent contacts in, in New Zealand that have their ear to the ground, that know people in the tourism offices and they will know when it is a safe bet for you to arrange a trip and, and, and start planning. We are very excited uh, to have you again on. For those people that maybe want to share this presentation or you have friends that want to join you in New Zealand, you'd love for them to see uh, and hear all of the insights from Ignacio Maza. We'll be posting this presentation on the Bon Voyage Travel website. So go to bbtravel.com. You'll want to click on events and give us about up to 24 hours. It will be posted there. You can Tell all your friends to go watch it. We want them to see it. And then turn around and contact one of our great advisors at Bon Voyage to begin that planning process to customize a special trip to New Zealand just for you. Uh, I consider it an honor, and I hope you do as well as our viewers here, to have the esteemed colleague, and I'm just, it's a pleasure to call him a personal friend of mine, Ignacio. You were fantastic once again today. We're blessed to have you as a part of our network and as a friend in the industry. Thank you so much. No, it's my, it's my pleasure. And I wish all of you all the very best. And I hope that we get out there and start traveling real soon because I want to get on an airplane. So you bet. Take Check care our website. And thanks for having me today. Thank you, Ignacio. Check our website. Our weekly webinar series continues next week. We will be discussing the finest cuisine at sea. We're going to have Executive Vice President from Oceana Cruises, James Rodriguez, as our esteemed colleague. And he was one of the original employees of Oceana Cruises who actually established that brand pillar of the finest cuisine at sea. You'll hear all about it next week. Go sign up and we'll have another series of events coming to you in the month of June. Stay tuned. Thanks again, Ignacio. Okay, okay. thank you. To all Take of care. our friends. Okay, bye-bye.